You got a tattoo while in Tashkent. Yes, yes, I Tell did. Tell us about it. Uh, what does it say, first of all? Or a zoo. Okay. And um, again, words have power, right? I love words, um, inspired by words. So uh, a word that I use often in my art is dream, right? Because I feel like I'm living the dream, right? Never in a million years did I think I'd be in Uzbekistan and art brought me here, right? And the process of art making brought me here. So I wanted to have that reflected on my, uh, in, in my arm because my tattoos represent my journey as an artist, right? So I had to put Orzu on my arm. Hey everyone, my name is Jahangir Azimov. I'm, uh, this is Gazeta Us, and uh, we are joined by the artist from New York, Lance Johnson, who's been here for two weeks giving workshops on the art, uh, embedding and uh, feeling the vibes of Tashkent and sharing his knowledge with the people of Uzbekistan. Yes. Uh, so good to have you. Thank you for an interview. Thank you for this. This is awesome. How is your stay in Uzbekistan? Um, there's one word that comes to mind. Amazing. I've uh, had some incredible experiences, mm -hmm. uh, just immersed in the culture, working with some young, amazing artists, uh, some really creative uh, young people. And I've always, that always inspires me. So it's been incredible. The food is amazing. <laughs> the park, there's so many green spaces in the city. Yeah. So I love it. I think it's a, it's a good idea to give a background of how you came here. Tell us what is art residence. Absolutely. So uh, artist residencies are where an artist can travel to different locations and connect with different cultures and see how that inspires their work, but also how they can inspire other people in that community. So it sounds like a, it's a program that you apply for and the artists sort of like a get the nominations and how did it work for you? Yeah, so I worked with an uh, organization called CEC Arts Link. They're mm -hmm. based in New York. And what they do is they connect artists in the States with um, like uh, programs uh, overseas, um, this one in particular is former Soviet Union countries. Mm -hmm. So they connect us with a partner in the region and we connect. So I've worked with Ilkholm Theater mm -hmm. to yeah. just, yeah, yeah, which has been amazing, an amazing experience uh, working with Arena. And you've been here for past two weeks. Yeah, it's been about maybe two and a half weeks. Uh, oh, wow. It was supposed to be longer, but I had some visa issues in the beginning. Mm -hmm. so but I definitely plan to come back because I, that's I love great. the that's community great. Here, That's great, that's great. For sure. For the past two weeks, you've been working with the artists here, local artists, but can you tell us about like, how did you select or did someone select, how did the artists become participants of this project? Yeah, so uh, Ilkhome Theater uh, reached out to some local artists here. Um, they sent them some videos and some images of my work and told, her, told them about my process and they signed up. So I'm super grateful to them for coming through and hanging out. And I wanted it to create like an art studio space. You know, I didn't want it to feel like a class. I wanted them to come in. So I play music, you know, I have brought my play? supplies. A lot of hip hop and jazz. I that's love great. hip hop and jazz, that's you great. know, a lot of instrumentals, you know, yeah. Yeah. cause that's part of my process. Lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cause my art is in improvisational, just sort of like jazz. So. What's the result of this collaboration? So the main purpose for me is always the process, right? Okay. To get artists to enjoy the process. But the end result is going to be an exhibit that we're having tomorrow, actually. The opening is tomorrow, 5.30 at uh, Ilkhome Theater. Uh, and we created a body of work that is collaborative. Mm -hmm. And we call the exhibit Dialogues because we're communicating through art. So whenever I see a blank canvas, again, the words are the soul of my painting. So I always start with uh, words, right? So I'll start with inspiration. And I've developed my own unique style, right? That's part of graffiti. It's sort of like a secret language, right? So I always have to activate the canvas because again, I think of uh, the canvas as a wall, right? And the graffiti walls, especially in New York, they're layered, right? There's the old graffiti with the new, 
and it's just creating these layers and textures with the urban decay and the torn posters. Does it say inspiration? It does. It says uh, reality. Does it say it reality? Says inspiration, shine, mm -hmm. dreams, beauty. Oh, Orzu. Orzu. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> yeah. Peace. So again, the words that I use are very, are inspirational because I think of young people whenever I'm creating a piece, and I mm -hmm. want them to uh, be inspired by the words, right? So I want a word to um, peek out at them and hopefully motivate them. Uh, inspirationally and then so that'll always be my first layer and then I'll add paint and and I use I don't really use paint brushes a lot right my process is sort of improvisational like jazz right so I'll use paint scrapers to create another layer so and my work is pretty uh, abstract right Again, it's the graffiti walls that are my inspiration. So I'll create that. And, and you don't you mind can... having multiple colors layer. Yeah, because you can still see the words as well, mm -hmm. too. And mm -hmm. then I, I always like to use uh, vibrant colors. Um, again, it's just the energy for me is the energy of New York and the vitality. Um, growing up there, you know, I was always my inspiration was walking the streets of New York. Right. Mm -hmm. And you hear now it's, it's just like a movie, right? You hear music, <laughs> yeah. you hear uh, people talking, but you see colors and movement and energy. So I like to create that in my pieces. Right. And again, I just layer with different techniques. Like that. And what is this? Sorry. looks great yeah and it's just uh, me just building the layers right so I'll use different techniques I like to use different paper I always tell people that I didn't go to art school so I don't know what not to do so I just try <laughs> different things you know <laughs> and it's worked out for me so far right <laughs> when do you know how, how many layers do you want to put so again, it's improvisation, so I'll just flow. Usually I paint like five different pieces at one time. So I'm moving around the studio, you know, I got music playing and um, it depends, right? If I'm creating a piece for someone, then I'll know when it's uh, completed. But if I'm creating a piece for myself, I won't, there you go. I'm just gonna play some there music. I'm gonna give that vibe, big show vibe. Go. I like that too. That's that's, a uh, that's Big Sean. That's from Free Free Free. Is that Big Sean? It's Big Sean. Ah. Ah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good movie too. Good yeah, movie. yeah. I haven't watched it yet. You haven't seen it yet? No, yet. Yeah, I saw it. It's pretty good. When do you know the painting is complete? So I just go with the flow. Um, sometimes I'll step back and let it dry, and then I'll add more layers. Right? I use a lot of markers. Right? So I use a lot of markers because again, just building those layers, sorry, with the words. Yeah, so again, I'll step back and I'll let it dry a little bit and then I'll go back in with markers and I'll add other elements to it. So it's just building the layers as I go. And then creating those textures, letting that dry. And then I usually use spray paint, but I don't have spray paint here today. So, how many uh, how many works you've created? Y'all have created for this exhibition. We have one, two. So I created two on my own. We uh, the uh, students collaborated on three together with us. All three of them. Uh, we also created these tapestry series that, and then we did individual uh, collaborations. So, so how many it's overall? Quite a few. How many is about? Maybe it's about like twenty-five. 
Yeah. 25 pieces. So that's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, so we've been flowing. Uh, how many students have you been working with? I want to say uh, the max was like eight. It was eight of us, maybe. Yeah, eight. The next one. But, yeah, because No, we, we would flow. Like some days somebody would come, mm -hmm. but another day they couldn't make it, so but they would come. So it was like kind of, I wanted it to be like a flow in. You know, I, you didn't have to be here at a specific time. You know, we wanted it to, again, be like an art studio. Did you bring? Uh, did you I bring brought them? those with me. Yes. Really? How about the paints? The paints I brought the. Acrylics. What did you bring yes. with yourself? What was? What is like? <laughs> what was back there? Yeah, all right. So most <laughs> of this stuff I brought with me because, um, again, I use the markers often, and I wanted to share that, the that process with the uh, students. Um, I brought stencils because that's part of my process. So of this layering. calls stencil. Yeah, stencil. Yeah, stencil. it's like a okay. stencil design. So I brought a bunch of those just so we can play around with. Gotcha. But yeah, I brought my markers with me and I'm going to leave them behind. I want the students to be able to use these going forward. You know, when you walk down the streets in New York, you see the artists out there, you see the vibe and you feel it in the yeah. air. And you see uh, the art in the buildings, in the people. And New York is very rich. Yes. And one of them uh, in, in styles and genres of the art. And one of them is graffiti. Yes. Tell us what's the value of uh, graffiti. So I think public art is vital. And I always think of how um, a lot of people are intimidated by museums and galleries. Like there are people, especially sometimes in the States, that are afraid to go into galleries because they feel like they're not for them, right? Oh. So for me, public art is access for everyone to see, right? Mm -hmm. It's free for everyone to see. How did you learn about graffiti? So growing up in New York, I was immersed in it, right? <laughs> uh, it was everywhere, right? Yeah. And I would walk down the street, I would see a wall mm -hmm. that was uh, had graffiti on it. And it inspired me, right? Not even knowing it subconsciously, right? Yeah. Even yeah. me growing up on the trains, on the metro, mm -hmm. there was graffiti uh, on the metro. So it was everywhere. So it's definitely part of my DNA. Mm -hmm. And I always think of, when I think of graffiti walls, I think of the history of that wall, right? Mm -hmm. And that's part of my work is building those layers, those textures in the piece, right? You'll have old graffiti covered by new, and then you'll have urban decay that creates textures. Yeah. And that's what I try to incorporate in my work. And that's kind of what I was trying to talk to the kids about today. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like uh, many people would take graffiti for vandalism. Yes. And can you tell us uh, what's the difference in between the two and how to tell like this is vandalism or this is not? And I think every art form evolves, right? Right. And um, I think of hip hop music, right? It mm -hmm. started in the basements of abandoned buildings and now it has taken over the world, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like graffiti has started as quote unquote vandalism, but now you see it in galleries all over the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I think you have to allow art forms to evolve. For those who have n hasn't been to New York and mm -hmm. maybe doesn't, or maybe who has gotten the sense of New York through Hollywood movies. Yeah. Can you tell us about like, what, how does it work in New York with fan like graffiti? I know it's everywhere, we know it's everywhere, yeah. but uh, other people still take it as, as vandalism? Yeah, I think there's a, a differentiation between street art and graffiti, right? There's okay. some art that's created on walls that it's not paid for, right? So that could be considered vandalism. But there are mural projects throughout the city mm -hmm. and throughout many cities mm -hmm. that uh, are paid for by organizations and they're there to inspire the community, right? Okay. So they hire artists to come in and paint these huge elaborate murals to inspire the communities. Okay. How important uh, the personal identity uh, in graffiti and, and its form of expression? Growing up in New York, um, you are surrounded by diverse cultures, mm -hmm. right? So it, it fosters open-mindedness, right? Like you're in curiosity to different things. So for me, as an artist, I'm curious about all different styles, right? So graffiti allows me to express myself in many different ways, right? It's a sort of freedom for me, right? <laughs> So 
So it when, says Arzu and I can't yes. really see it straight away there. <laughs> so when I did an art residency in Ankara, Turkey, I was so inspired by the fabrics that I saw in the bazaars that I wanted to create art outside of the rectangle, right? So I started playing around with different uh, raw canvas pieces and putting them together and creating uh, pieces like this that are sort of hang like tapestries. But and also it says creases. lost. No, it says, so that is another oh, thing. Oh, is this post? Post no ills. So this is a piece of mine. Wow, I love yeah. the colors out there. Thank you, thank you. It says at home. Yeah, inspiration. Hayot. Hayat. Yes. Yeah, yes. beautiful. I Thank absolutely you. love the vibrance there. Thank you so much. And this is one of our collaboration pieces with the students. Wow, Again, this is an exclusive Hayat. snake pick. Yes, <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah, that's beautiful. So we worked with the techniques of layering and we talked about it and I feel like they did a great job. It's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And then this Can I is, take the other one? Yeah. And this is the... Uh, like the centerpiece, right? We called, again, this, the story is uh, dialogues, mm -hmm. right? So we created a piece with all the words from our different languages coming together. Did you create this one too? Or was it like collaborative with... Uh, totally us? collaborative. And this is the collage piece. Uh, we talked about the selfie project and we wanted to create a piece that has all of our... So I love New York is there. <laughs> C-Bus is Columbus, because I recently, again, a couple of years ago, I moved to Ohio. But I still do work in New York, so I'm back and forth. But, and everybody's individual voice is playful, you know? You know, Tashkent as a city doesn't really have murals and graffiti. Yeah, I know. Uh, you probably did not notice them <laughs> if you if you did. I don't know, but uh, do you think there is an advantage of having graffiti in uh, in the city, or maybe do you think it's an advantage or disadvantage for the city to have graffiti? Yeah, I think it would be a beautiful thing because I there are so many amazing artists here. Mm -hmm. If they can express their love of the city in art forms for the public mm -hmm. to express, I think that is only a positive thing. That would be a beautiful thing. You know, previously the local government has taken the steps to like sort of, sort of like oversee the, the art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it street art. It's, it's in, in, incorrect to call it street art, mm -hmm. isn't it? Or is that okay to call it a street art? I mean, you can call it street art. A lot of people don't like the word graffiti, so. Really? Yeah. For why? For, for what Well, reason? they feel like it's a negative connotation. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. So a lot of artists, um, like especially back in the day, mm -hmm. they don't like the word graffiti because, again, it was a negative connotation. So I would say street art is, is fine to me. I mean, I don't have a problem with either. So the point is local government try to, uh, local government can try to collaborate, collaborate with local artists mm -hmm. on uh, coming up with uh, essentially the concepts for the art form, the way they would, would express themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe at some point they collected uh, the concepts, the suggestions of the artists, but the collaboration didn't really work out because there was like too much of an overseeing from uh. the government. Uh, tell, us about, tell, tell us about New York. How does it work in New York? I think it's a similar thing, right? You have uh, organizations that hire artists to create something for their business mm -hmm. or it could be for the city of New York. And there is a process that they go through where you have to come to a consensus of what you're going to create, right? So the artist works with the government officials or they work with the organization that they're um, hired to paint a mural for. And it becomes a dialogue, right? You have to create that dialogue and trust. But how to build that trust? See, that's I mean, a, a that's million a million dollar question. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the problem came, uh, the problem that we had here is that there was too much of an oversight. Mm. And uh, that essentially, um, in a way, killed the perception and the vision of the artist. Like yeah. how, to what degree, how to keep that balance and how to keep that dialogue. How does it work in New York? I think it has to be a balance, right? Um, 
the art, the artist has the um, option of accepting mm -hmm. the parameters of the art project or not. You know, if you want to create something, you have to work with the organization. You know, and but you also have to remain yourself. Yourself as exactly. an artist. Yeah, you have a voice, right? And if the organization or the government officials are coming to you as the artist, they have to know that that's your voice. And if they don't accept that, then you should not accept the project. But do you think that, um, do you specifically think that um, having government to oversee uh, projects like that and not without damaging uh, the artist's vision is possible? I think 100% I think it's possible yeah. if you're both on the same page, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I would say if you're trying to inspire the community, then you should be on the same page, right? Because that's a mutual benefit, right? The artist wants to inspire the community, the government wants to inspire their community, so I think it could be mutual benefit. But you have to have that dialogue. Graffiti is about a it's about a message, sending a message to on societal issues. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, I remember in um, 2016, when Trump came to office, you gave us the uh, piece called uh, We the People. Yes. Uh, and my question is, do you think uh, art mm -hmm. can be apolitical? Well, for me, it's, can, it's always political, right? The for, art is political? Yeah, for me, like We the People was representing for me the diversity and beauty and vibrance that represents America to me, right? New York City, the culture that the people that I know in the in the country. So that was a political statement. We the people, because we're diverse, we're uh, vibrant, and no one person represents all of us. So that was the statement with that piece, and the reception to it was incredible. So. Um... Do you think art can be labeled art if it's unpolitical? Yes. I don't think it's up to the artist yeah. to have to be to make a political statement. I mean, there's such a diverse uh, group of artists, right? So some yeah. artists can be apolitical if they choose to be. Yeah. You know? But it's still art. It's, yeah, it's your creative expression. You know, it doesn't have to, you don't have to make a statement. You, uh, I want to talk about the dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, the exhibition that you're going to carry out tomorrow. Yes. I'm curious to know what you want to talk about with uh, your visitors and what you want to have a dialogue on. Yeah, I feel like the soul of my paintings, words, I feel like words have power. And I use a lot of words of inspiration in my work, right? Um, just creating those dialogues through art. And that's why I wanted to cre um, name this exhibit Dialogue, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I've worked with several artists here that I've never met mm -hmm. before, and we came together for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and we built this amazing rapport, right? And uh, just seeing the body of work that we created, I'm super inspired by that. Do you think art can change the world? <laughs> and if yes, I guess the more complicated question <laughs> is, uh, like how and to what changed? What changed to bring? And yes, what do you think? I think. 100% art can change the world. Mm -hmm. I think creativity mm -hmm. can totally change the world. Um, yeah. It just fosters open-mindedness, right? And diversity of thought, right? As an artist, as creatives, we can 100% change the world, right? And I'm an example of that. I travel constantly to connect with different communities, uh, a lot of them don't look like me. A lot of them don't talk the same language with me. But we connect, we connect and build rapport through art, through artistic practice. And to me, that is amazing. That's one step at a time changing the world, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, has there been a piece of art, uh, or maybe a book, mm -hmm. or maybe song that stood out, or maybe album that mm. inspired you uh, like so much that, I don't know, do you think there has been a piece of art that inspired you the most? I would say a movement of artists inspired me so much. Mm -hmm. um, it's the Harlem Renaissance. Mm. Um, it was a collective of artists in Harlem, New York, uh, dancers, musicians, 
writers, visual artists, all coming together, mm -hmm. collaborating and mm -hmm. creating an amazing body of work, inspiring each other along the way, and they became hugely famous and they changed the world in their way, right? And now people study the Harlem Renaissance all the time. So mm -hmm. for me, that inspired me because that showed me that growing up, I didn't see artists that looked like me. And when I saw the Harlem Renaissance, I saw a video of them when I was 14 and it planted the seed into me like, oh, I could do, I could actually be an artist. And it was, it, it changed me. It mm -hmm. changed me from that moment. So mm -hmm. for sure, the Harlem Renaissance. Okay. What is the future of artist residency? So what is the future of collaboration with at home? I think there are going to be tremendous other uh, residencies. I'm actually going to apply again to come back to Uzbekistan. Wow, that's yeah. great. So that's I'm great. looking forward to it. I'm excited about that. I'm hopefully going to work with the U.S. Embassy mm -hmm. to make something happen. Uh, but yeah, residencies, there'll be more residencies coming in, uh, art, artist residencies. Um, just creating those dialogues from people from all walks of life, right, all over the world. So I think that's a beautiful thing. Great.